Welcome back to Hard Run Box. Today, we are getting into part two of our budget slash mid-range gaming PC build series. Last week on the channel, we built an Intel system using the Core i5-12400F. And today, well, if you're more interested in going down the AMD route, you wanna use an AM4 motherboard, we are gonna be building a very similar system using this CPU right here, the AMD Ryzen 5 5600. It'll also be using the Radeon RX 6600 GPU we used in our Intel build. And the general idea with these systems is, well, firstly, to recommend a series of budget-friendly, value-oriented parts that you can use to put together into a gaming system for you today. We will go through all of our choices and recommendations for parts in just a moment. But it's not just about recommending parts. We also want to go through and compare our new AMD system that we'll be building in just a moment with the Intel system that we built last week just to see what are the differences like while gaming, while using the system, what are things like temperatures, power consumption, all those various metrics, and Steve will be handling all that benchmarking in an upcoming video. But it should be very interesting. Both systems use very similar parts, and of course, we will be going through and telling you all about those parts in just a moment before getting into the build process. But before we do all of that, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by MSI and their NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series of graphics cards. Now for budget conscious gamers, the Venta series offers loads of value with a no fuss performance focused design, packing large triple fan coolers. Then for the next tier in performance and aesthetics, the gaming series offers low noise operation and eye catching LED lighting. Or for those of you after the best of the best, the Supreme series delivers uncompromising performance through state of the art thermal designs and of course, those chiseled good looks. And then all models support ray tracing and DLSS. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. For the CPU, we've chosen the new AMD Ryzen 5 5600. With this CPU coming in at just $200 US, there's really no reason to purchase the Ryzen 5 5600X anymore, which is $30 more expensive and only provides a few extra percent in terms of performance. The Ryzen 5 5600 is still a 6-core 12-thread Zen 3 processor, the only difference to the 5600X being a 200 megahertz reduction in clock frequency, as these parts aren't quite as well binned. AMD's Ryzen 5 processors get pretty close to their higher end parts in gaming, as AMD still provides a generous 32 megabytes of L3 cache with the 6 core models, and cache is very important to overall gaming performance. Unless you have some really heavy gaming workloads or are using the chips for heaps of productivity work, the Ryzen 5 5600 is a better choice than an 8 core Ryzen 7 part and therefore offers better value. Right now, the 5600 seems to be in a bit of a sweet spot, which makes it a great choice for this build. The motherboard we're slotting the 5600 into is the MSI Pro B550-A, which is the B550 equivalent of the Pro B660M-A we used for our Intel build. The MSI Pro B550-A is a great value B550 motherboard that delivers excellent VRM performance, easily able to handle the Ryzen 5 5600, as well as higher end parts like the 5950X if you choose to upgrade it in the future. It's got plenty of connectivity and ports, plus it costs just $150 right now, which is a decent mid-range price for this sort of board. Unlike with Intel B660 motherboards, where $150 is really the minimum you'd want to spend to get something quality, you can go a bit cheaper at times on the AMD side if you want to save a few dollars here and there. But by using MSI Pro motherboards in both our Intel and AMD builds, we can do a direct comparison with these. For memory, this is relatively straightforward. AMD CPUs use DDR4 memory, and when it comes to capacity and frequency, 16GB makes the most sense for today's games. Of course, with this MSI motherboard, you can upgrade to 32GB easily in the future if you want to. Then for memory speeds, the sweet spot today appears to be DDR4 3600, which is often the same price as DDR4 3200 or slower configurations. So you may as well get 3600 speeds as the Ryzen 5 5600 can easily handle it. For this build, we're using G-Skill Ripjaws V-Series memory, which is very reliable. We've used this stuff many times in the past. It's affordable and widely available. Of course, we would recommend you check what's available at your local retailer for the lowest price, but it's $65 for the kit we're using. It's right among the best value choices. The GPU is always a contentious topic these days, especially with current GPU prices. However, the choice we've gone with for this budget build, we feel, delivers among the best value in the market today. And that's the AMD Radeon RX 6600, which you can currently buy on Newegg for as little as $340 US, which is only $10 over this GPU's $330 MSRP. 
The 6600 has actually come down in price since we did our Intel build last week, and I wouldn't be surprised to see pricing hit the MSRP shortly. Usually there's a few options for the RX 6600 available. We're using the MSI Mech variant today, which is one of the most affordable AIB models and a great value choice, but as always, you should check what's available in your region for the optimal deal. Why the RX 6600? Well, for a GPU in the $400 range, it's the best on the market at the moment. This GPU is very suited to 1080p gaming and is also a decent budget choice for 1440p as well. It's around 25% faster than Nvidia's GeForce RTX 3050 and it stacks up favorably compared to the more expensive RTX 3060 as well. This is especially true in these budget categories where ray tracing isn't very impressive on either card and I think getting 25% more performance in games is enough to mitigate the loss of DLSS. For storage, there are heaps of options you can go with here, and really this is going to depend mostly on the capacity you need. But for this build, we've opted for Team Group's Cardia Zero Z440 in a 1TB capacity. This is a decent quality PCI 4.0 SSD using TLC memory and with a DRAM cache, important for optimal performance as a boot and gaming drive. Rated speeds are up to 5GB per second read and 4.4GB per second write for sequential performance, and the M.2 form factor is ideal for the motherboard we're using. This particular drive will set you back $125 US at the moment, which is a good price for a PCI 4.0 drive. At this stage, we have a slight preference for PCI 4.0 SSDs as a boot drive, given the additional speed for loading apps and so on, but the games themselves won't benefit much at the moment, so you could also go PCI 3.0 if you want to save a bit of cash. A 1TB PCI 3.0 drive typically sets you back $80 to $90, so a relatively small difference, and like I said, plenty of other options available if the Z440 doesn't take your fancy. For the power supply, this is not an area you generally want to skimp on, otherwise you might accidentally buying an exploding one. So for this, we are grabbing something from a known brand in Corsair. It's the Corsair RM750X, which is highly recommended in the famous PSUT list, 80 plus gold efficiency, modular designed for easy cable management, and 750 watts is really plenty for this system, overkill even, but will provide a lot of scope for upgrades in the future if you want to chuck in more powerful CPUs or GPUs. The RM750X currently goes for around $120 US, which is pretty standard for a high quality PSU, but there are other choices if you want to go down a more budget line. The MSI MPG A750GF is another 750 watt 80 plus gold option for $100, and of course lower capacity models are available too, although you don't often save that much dropping to say 650 watts or lower in the same product series. 750 watts, great sweet spot for value, and also upgrade paths in the future. Next up is the case, and once again lots of options here for buyers depending on the sort of style and features that you want. But for a budget build, I probably wouldn't recommend spending more than $100, which is what we've done with the Fantex Eclipse P300A we're using for this build. Going on the gamer's nexus philosophy of airflow, this case has a metal mesh on the front to bring in plenty of air to cool the components, and we got the special RGB model, which comes pre-installed with two front fans to enhance our B-roll. The normal model has just one rear fan, so for optimal airflow, adding in a front fan yourself or grabbing the RGB model with three pre-installed fans is the way to go. Aside from cooling, this is a really neat compact case, got lots of modern features like tempered glass side panel and so on. It's just $70 for the standard model, which seems to be a good sweet spot for today's budget-friendly cases, although of course lots of options here that compete with this, so do your research. Final note here is just on CPU cooling. The Ryzen 5 5600 includes an AMD Wraith Stealth box cooler, which is an adequate option for entry-level PC builders that don't want to spend a cent more. For this build, we are going to benchmark it against the similar Intel system we've already built, and for that we want to equalize the cooling, so we're opting for an aftermarket cooler from Be Quiet. The model we wanted for this build, the Pure Rock 2, was out of stock when we went to get it, and seems to be a good option for just $40 US. But what we ended up with instead was the Dark Rock Slim, which is a bit of overkill here at $65 US, so I'd probably try to get that Pure Rock 2 instead where possible, or just use the box cooler. But again, the point here is to compare this with the same cooler for our Intel build, so that's what we're using here too. The total cost for this build came to $1,110 US, with pricing current as of this video. But of course, 
We have links to all the parts below if you want to see current pricing, which will be handy if you found this video after it was published. Most of the parts here have been optimized to strike that balance between value, longevity, and upgrade pathways, which I think is super important for a budget mid-range build, as you might want to improve it as you go. You might also be able to save maybe $100 by optimizing areas like the cooler, SSD, power supply, and even the motherboard. But overall, I think this is a good mix. So with all the parts explained and explored, let's head now to the build process. First part of the build process is probably the most simple part of these particular builds, which is putting the AMD CPU into our MSI B550 motherboard. So with AM4 sockets, very straightforward. All you have to do is just, there's a little lever on the front here. We just bring that open. And then again on the CPU is very small, tiny little indicator in the bottom left-hand corner. We just want to line that up with the same indicator in the socket. And with these ones, it's just a simple drop it into the slot process. CPU's in, lever down, and it's done. We're ready to move on to the next step, which for this build, I think we're going to put in the SSD next because we are using a tower CPU cooler in terms of, you know, the the height of the cooler might extend a little bit over onto this SSD slot, so we'll just deal with that next. So we've got the standoff pre-installed, which is great, which means we can just slot the SSD in, bring it down, and then, thanks to the little motherboard screws that we get in the box, just need one of these tiny little ones. And because we are using a PCIe 4.0 SSD, it's very important that we properly use the uh, heat shield that comes with this motherboard. So we're just going to peel off the plastic. Lots of people forget this. I've forgotten this a few times in the past, but that just provides good contact between the SSD and the heat shield, which will help us cool that SSD down while we're using it. For the particular CPU cooler that we're using, we need to remove the built-in little CPU cooling clips that they've put in there, and we're just going to replace those for use with our Be Quiet cooler. Okay, pretty straightforward process with the Be Quiet cooler that we're using. We just need to put these things on like this, and then very handily on these coolers, it automatically says they're just AM4 for us, so we know which screw holes are required. Very easy. Thermal paste time, we're just using the built-in, well, I shouldn't say built-in, it's included with the Be Quiet cooler. Tiny little amount of thermal paste here, but that should be perfectly fine for the CPU. Now, of course, always contentious, the CPU pattern, the CPU thermal paste pattern. On Ryzen CPUs, I tend to go with the X, so that's what I'm gonna be doing for this one. You can, of course, bring your own thermal paste if you'd like to use a more premium thermal paste, but I tend to find that What's included with these sorts of coolers tends to be perfectly adequate. Put enough on there. All right, very important, make sure you remove the warning label. Okay, down we go with the CPU cooler. So it's gonna be pretty loose there to begin with, but once we install this little crossbar, it goes across like this. And then very simple process of inserting these screws in on either side, and screwing it down. On this motherboard, it very handily tells us which are DIMM slots to put in first. We need to use DIMM 2A and DIMM B2 as well. So very straightforward, second one's in. Just pop those open. Ready to chuck in the case. IO Shield in next. Motherboard going in, moment of truth. Next step for me whenever I'm building a PC is to put the GPU in. Some people will put the power supply in next. I always go with the GPU. So we've got the 6600 XT from MSI here. We're just going to, first of all, now I was just about to put inside the case, but we actually first need to remove these things on the side here. So And in we go. Power supply cables in, luckily this Corsair power supply is modular, which makes it very easy for us. We can only put in the cables that we want to use, which for our case we need 
the PCIe power cable, just one is needed for the 6600 CPU power cable. Uh, there's a SATA cable for some of the built-in stuff to the case, so we need that power cable in as well. Just tuck in there. And then obviously the motherboard cable. Tight fit on that power supply, but we did get it in there in the end. Uh, with all the modular cables still attached and ready to go. All right, main components are in. We've got the power supply and GPU, motherboard, everything. Now it's just about cable management. So let's get to it. All right, moment of truth. We've put the build together. Everything's assembled. Cable management's done. As you can see, we've put the side panel on. That's how confident we are that the system is gonna work first try. And we're just gonna power on for the first time, see if it posts, fingers crossed. Well, lucky for us, our system posted the first time, which is perfect. As you can see, it's working. All the fans are running and everything. And we're in the BIOS of this MSI motherboard. Now, when you set up a system like this for the first time, there's really not too many BIOS settings that you're gonna to need to change. Potentially, if your motherboard BIOS isn't the right version to run the latest CPUs, particularly the 5600 being a newer part, you might have to go and run the BIOS flashback utility. But this board, you can do that just from a USB stick, no CPU required, which is really handy. I believe that's a feature of most MSI motherboards. Back with the mouse, because it's much easier to navigate the BIOS with the mouse. Uh, like I was saying, with the XMB profile, that's really the only thing you need to adjust in these settings. You can go into the fan info and change your fan settings and stuff if you really want to. But as far as the XMP settings, just need to click XMP Profile 1 up here. That'll set us to the DDR4 3600 speeds that the memory supports. And then we can just click on the X up here and click Yes. And it's going to reset the system, apply the XMP profile. And because there's no Windows installed on the system just yet, it will just boot straight back into the BIOS, but then we can hand it straight over to Steve for testing. Okay, great success for our budget PC build featuring the AMD Ryzen 5 5600 and the RX 6600 GPU as well. It posted on the first go, which is really good news. Always love when that happens. And yeah, so far no issues. We've gone and we've loaded the XMP profile. So it's pretty much ready to be used. Just needs to have Windows installed. Obviously applications, games, everything you want to run on it will be installed by Steve for the benchmarking session video that he will be preparing in the next couple of weeks. So with this system, we'll have the Ryzen 5 5600 uh, with the B550 motherboard going head to head with the Intel build that we did last week on the channel. That build had the Core i5-12400F in it, and he's gonna run through a whole bunch of tests and stuff. So this isn't the end for this system. We will be showing it off on the channel one more time, uh, going through and benchmarking it, just showing you a couple of comparisons. But apart from that, we're pretty much done for this budget build. If you are interested in building something using the components that we've talked about throughout this video, we do have links to everything in the description. Of course, pricing does change uh, relatively frequently these days, but hopefully all the options that we've been talking about throughout this video will remain great budget choices for you and your build if you are planning on building something around this thousand-ish US dollar budget. Uh, if you want to support our independent hardware testing and all the videos that we make, we have our Patreon and Floatplane accounts. You'll find those also links in the description below. You'll gain access to things like our Discord community, monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, all sorts of good stuff coming up this month. So well worth signing up. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.